Okay, when we're looking at blueberry varieties, you guys like large size. They're easier to pick, okay? Uh, we want uh, light blue color. You want firm fruit. You want a small dry fruit scar. You know, where that fruit comes off the plant, we like a small dry scar. Uh, some of these varieties have real wet scars. Those are the ones that tend to rot more uh, if they stay moist. So a small dry sc scar uh, improves your storage ability. Uh, we want something with uh, long shelf life, nice aroma and flavor, ability to hold on the plant without dropping. Some of these varieties drop their berries a little easier than others. Uh, berries differ in, as to when they ripen, and usually an earlier blooming variety tends to ripen a little earlier. Uh, not always true, but early ripening varieties tend to be more prone to frost, so we've kind of got to balance that out. Uh, uh, we tend to look for a little earlier ripening varieties just because of this spotted wing drosophila that I think Rick will be talking about a little later on. Each variety usually supplies fruit for about a two to three week period. And uh, as a rule of thumb, uh, 60 to 80 days after bloom is when you might be picking blueberries. So those of you guys that are putting a marketing plan together, uh, you wanna start early. This is a really old table with a lot of old varieties in it, but it's the only table I've got that shows harvest for uh, some different varieties. And so you can see how some of the early varieties harvest here, and then you've got some later varieties that harvest down in this area. So you can spread your harvest out, spread your labor out. You don't want them all coming in at the same time. That puts a lot of pressure on your marketing and, and your harvest crew. Uh, floral development and, and frost hardiness and so forth. Uh, this is uh, the Easter freeze from 2007 uh, showing frost injury on blueberries, and I have a lot of trouble telling when blueberries are damaged after a frost. I can pick it out on apples really, really easily, but it's a little tough telling on blueberries. Uh, we'll get a little damage at about 28 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, all flowers are not the same stage of development, so the ones that are less developed are a little hardier than the ones that are a little further out. So a lot of times we don't get 100% kill, we get our crop reduced. Now, blueberries are one of these crops where we typically want most of the flowers that produce fruit. On things like apples and pears, we only want like 5% or 2% of those flowers that produce fruit on those types of plants. So they can take a lot more frost injury than we can on blueberries. So that's the difference between tree and small fruit crops. Uh, in purchasing plants, we strongly recommend starting with a two-year-old plant. Yeah, those little rooting cuttings and those one-year-old plants, they're cheap. It looks like you're gonna get into it in a good way, but uh, you put those out and they just don't fend for themselves out there in the field against the weeds and the drought and everything, and you'll lose a whole bunch of them that way. So if you get smaller plants, it's a good idea to grow them in pots for a year to get that plant up around 18 inches tall or so, so it can fend for itself out there. Uh, let's see, uh, you want to purchase from good nurseries uh, that practice virus testing so that you get clean plants. Uh, Nicole will be talking about this. Uh, we've got some blueberry virus, vir viruses that can put you out of business really quick. Uh, uh, fortunately, most of those are not problems for us in our area, but uh, some of these other areas have a lot of blueberry vir viruses that they're dealing with. Uh, Dan Becker put an article together for us in Fruit Facts about pollinating blueberries. And when they grow blueberries for me mechanical harvest out on the west coast, they plant solid blocks of one variety, of high bush blueberries. I was out there and I said, how are you doing this? They've got to be cross-pollinated. Well, there's some of them that don't need to be cross-pollinated as much. But the better the pollination you have on these, the more seeds you have, <clears throat> you tend to get larger berries, and so that's what we're after. So getting cross-pollination is still very important for us. Okay, um, I'm gonna take you through some of our blueberry variety trials that we've done. They take a long time. Most of these are not funded real well, but you know, you just don't plant a blueberry plant and four years later say, yeah, this is the best variety we've got. It takes them two, three years to get into production, and then we've gotta harvest these and weigh them and, and keep track of them. So this is a blueberry trial from our research and education center at Princeton, Kentucky. Uh, it's all, all over with. Uh, it was, uh, these are cumulative yields from 1995 to 2004. So about a 10 year period. Uh, so 
it's sort of surprising that a lot of these are relatively close <laughs> uh, over a 10-year period in, in, in harvest. And uh, this is a yield per plant, uh, and you can see the yield per plant varies, and this is in 2004, and here's the yield in 2004 in tons per acre. So uh, six tons per acre, 12,000 pounds, that's a really good yield on, on blueberries. Uh, usually we're looking at, uh, in fields, about uh, 6,000 pounds is, is pretty decent. Uh, you can see some of these, like Sunrise, is one we don't recommend anymore. It's an early maturing blueberry. You don't tend to get really high yields off of real early maturing varieties because you're stretching the capabilities of the plants. Uh, Duke, although, is, a, is, a, is an early one. This is one where Duke has done very well, and uh, that's an early maturing variety with uh, very good yields. Uh, these are the yields from that trial. Uh, it was planted in, I believe, 1995. Nah, earlier than that. And, but you can see the yields bounce up and down a little bit. Uh, they don't get up to one level and stay. It fluctuates from one year to the next. And you know, it could be too he heavy a crop one year and a lighter crop the next year. It could be a little frost in, in some cases, so it, it varies. Uh, here we have berry size. We've got Toro up there is one of the larger berries. And uh, Toro was uh, was a really good yielder for us in western Kentucky, and I understand that's doing fairly well for you here. Does anybody have Toro? No? Uh, it hasn't done real well for some people, uh, but uh, it, it did well in western Kentucky. Uh, you can see berry size Toro, Nelson, Duke, Patriot, Sierra, Sunrise, Blue Crop, and Blue Gold. Berry size goes down here. Here's a little bit on cumulative yield that you looked at. And this is the ripening order, Duke, Sunrise, Patriot, Blue Gold, Sierra, Blue Crop, Toro, and Nelson. Uh, we had a trial at Quicksand in eastern Kentucky in uh, Breathitt County, southeast Kentucky. Uh, one down at our university station and then one high up on a strip mine at Laurel Fork. And planting these blueberries on Laurel Fork was kind of like planting them on the moon. They'd stripped it, there wasn't anything there, Terry brought in organic matter and made raised beds, and he did phenomenally well with trickle irrigation. Uh, here you can see the varieties that were planted at Quicksand, and some of these same ones weren't planted at Laurel Fork, but then these are ones planted at Laurel Fork. These NC2852 are selections, they're not release varieties. These were ones that we were testing for Jim Ballington in North Carolina. But we've got some of the ones that uh, you planted now. The pentaploid means it's got five, five times the normal amount of chromosomes. So these are some interesting blueberries. Uh, the best yield, ones with the best yields at Quicksand in 2004, Samson, uh, Southern High Bush. This one has done really well down in Southeast Kentucky. It's not one that did well for us in Lexington. It's not one I would recommend for you here. And I don't think they're selling it anymore, but we've got an agent that has some of these that are doing extremely well down there in uh, Letcher County. You can see this one had a really high yield per plant, large berry size, nice appearance. Uh, when they first harvested, this is a percent harvested. So uh, gives you an idea of some of the earlier ones. There's Duke uh, that, that laid in there. I'll, I won't go through all these. Here's NC 1832, here's NC 1827. It did, uh, NC 1827 is a, is a later one. It's a rabbit eye, <laughs> blueberry. Uh, here's uh, the Laurel Fork yields in 2004. We've got some different ones up there that are looking good. Brigida, smaller variety size, was doing pretty well, large, large berry size. And uh, not too many harvested real early. Here's Patriot, a real early maturing one, had about 46% of the fruit harvested at this point. Uh, here's uh, uh, blue crop down here, only 9.4% of the fruit. It's a, it's a later one. Uh, some of these look better than others. Uh, these are cumulative yields from 2000 to 2004 in these plantings. Here's quicksand and laurel fork. Uh, it didn't turn out too well. Uh, what I've got is highlighted are varieties that did well in both places. We're looking for something that will do well in both places. And you can see Brigida did well at quicksand. It did well in Laurel Fork, and it had some of the highest yields of 
any of them. You know, statistically, there's probably not a whole lot of difference between these. But uh, Samson did well at uh, did much better at Laurel Fork than uh, down at Quicksand. Uh, Blue Gold is one that did well in both places. Blue Jay is one that did well in both places. Uh, Rika is an early maturing variety that did well at both places. And of course, our old standard Blue Crop did pretty well in both places. So uh, kind of interesting to compare those. So the best performers on all three sites were Brigida, Goat Blue Gold, and, and Blue Crop uh, between Quicksand and, and, uh, and uh, uh, Princeton or Western Kentucky. We've had a trial in Lexington that was planted in 2004 and it, we're, we're, we're finished with it this year. And uh, we had a number of different varieties. We had high bush, we had southern high bush, and we have rabbit eye in this trial. This is just high bush and southern high bush. Chandler has been our top yielder uh, in that trial. Uh, this is uh, a really high yield in pounds per acre. Uh, it's statistically different from all of the other ones. Ozark Blue is a southern high bush one that's done really well. Pamlico is one that's done really well. Uh, problem with Pamlico is uh, berry weight. It's a little bitty one, okay? <laughs> There's a lot of pick in there. Uh, here we have uh, berry taste and it varies a little bit from one year to the next, but uh, uh, we try to taste them, do our best job on that. We've got something here on berry appearance. Here's first harvest date and then mid midpoint of harvest date. Of course, you would harvest uh, probably a week earlier here because you're a little further west and south of us in Lexington. So uh, uh, you can see you can see Samson has not done well for us in in Lexington. Uh, but this gives you an idea uh, of how those did in uh, 2010. Uh, these are three-year averages for some of the southern high bush blueberries. And Pamlico and, and Ozark Blue are the ones that have done the best. Uh, Pamlico, again, is a small berry size. So Ozark Blue has been one that's done well for Nancy McCormick in Owensboro. That's one of her favorite ones. So that's one I feel pretty comfortable about recommending for you. Uh, here we have Blue Crop and Spartan. These are high bush blueberries. So they were just put in for comparison. So you can see how uh, the yields of those compare with these. So uh, pretty, pretty good uh, taste. Uh, we really like the taste of Pamlico there. It's got a good flavor. Uh, blueberry trial for the rabbit eye blueberries in that trial. They're spaced a little further apart. They're six feet apart. The other ones were four feet apart. And uh, you can see this selection NC 1827 has done pretty well. Uh, you know, we had a, a, a frost this spring, and a lot of them didn't do quite as well. I'm sorry, not the frost. We had the cold weather. We had the, the we had minus 13 at our university farm. So you remember when I talked about the rabbit eye blueberries not surviving below minus 10? Okay, so this is, uh, this is kind of interesting. We've got the uh, high bush and uh, we've got some high bush ones in there as comparison, uh, Spartan, and we've got Star and Lenore as southern high bush ones in as comparison. So you can see the, uh, the yields were pretty bad on most of these rabbit eye blueberries. They were seriously winter injured. Uh, the two that came out were NC 1827 Tiff blew a little bit there, but the better one was NC 1827. Uh, here we have a winter injury rating on the bushes, okay, that I did after, you know, in the spring. And uh, one is no injury, five is excessive injury. So you can see uh, these southern high bush ones, Star and Lenore, were seriously damaged. The rabbit eye ones were much more damaged. Uh, berry weight, uh, you've got some berry weights to compare there, and uh, uh, berry taste, uh, Lenore again was a pretty good tasting one. Uh, we've got some berry appearance, here we have the first harvest dates, and rabbit eyes come in later in the, in the summer. Uh, these are uh, yields over a number of years. Okay, so you can see how the yields varied. Uh, 
2011 was a real interesting year. Uh, uh, in two, in, we didn't get, didn't harvest in 2011. In 2010, we used Sinbar, which is a, we're talking organic blueberries here mostly today, but we use Sinbar. That's a really good herbicide. Rabbit eye blueberries that I didn't know are really sensitive to Sinbar. So that put us out of production for the next year is what happened. So uh, that's what happened there. But you can see 2013 was a bad freeze year. We got a lot of damage in 2015 from winter injury. And uh, 2007 was the uh, uh, Easter freeze where we, we froze most everything out again too. But this is a young planting uh, and we were just starting to harvest here. So uh, this gives you kind of a nice comparison. Uh, this is just data that we've just recently worked up.